Recognizing Scene Viewpoint Using Panoramic Place Representation Scene viewpoint recognition is an important but mostly ignored visual task for scene understanding. For example, if you are standing inside a theater, you can look in different directions and see different views. Although all of these views belong to the same place category, theater, the photos in this space look very different from different viewpoints. This is because a typical camera has a limited field of view and can only capture a portion of the environment around the observer. This is related to the pose recognition problem in object recognition. Only some parts of a 3D object, such as a television, can be seen from a single camera view, and the same object looks very different from different viewpoints. Pose recognition is important for interacting with objects. For example, you cannot watch a TV from this viewpoint. Although pose recognition has been studied in objects, this is a new problem in scenes. Just as with objects, viewpoint recognition is important for acting within scenes. For example, a view of the stage allows you to watch the show. A view of the rear of the theater allows you to find the exit. Both objects and scenes may exhibit rotational symmetry. For example, an observer standing in an open field can turn and see a nearly identical view in every direction. Similarly, a cup presents similar views when it is rotated. Other objects and places do not have rotational symmetry, but present some views that are mere images of each other, such as the left and right sides of the sofa or the left and right views of the theater. The goal of this paper is to build a place categorization and viewpoint recognition model. We use 360 degree spherical panoramic images for training because they cover all possible views within a place. Panoramic images were downloaded from the internet and given a scene category label, such as theater or street. There are 80 place categories in total in the Sun360 Panorama dataset. 26 categories are used in the following experiments. During testing, given a limited field of view photo as testing input, our model recognizes the place category and produces a compass-like prediction of the observer's viewpoint. By superimposing the testing view on an average panorama of many theaters, we can automatically predict the possible layout that extends beyond the available field of view. For training, we generate standard camera images from each spherical panorama. Images are generated from the equirectangular projection using a simple geometric transformation. We sample views at equal intervals around the horizontal. This allows us to sample all viewpoints in an unbiased manner and obtain an equal number of training images from each viewpoint. In addition, we know the ground truth viewpoint relations among the training views, which is a useful constraint to include in the training. Given a large set of aligned panoramic images, we can sample viewpoint images from the panoramas and train a viewpoint classification model using the sampled viewpoint images. For example, we can use all of the stages to train a classifier to recognize the view of the stage. However, aligning the panoramas is a difficult problem in itself. Although humans could supply the labels, it's a tedious task and it's not clear that there's only one correct alignment. So instead, we will start with the sample views from unaligned panoramic images and allow the algorithm to determine the best alignment during training. The model will compare views across training panoramas to discover the alignment and simultaneously train a viewpoint classifier for each view. Viewpoint classification only makes sense within a specific place category. For example, the stage view of a theater has no equivalent in another category such as a beach. So viewpoint recognition is a joint problem of place categorization and viewpoint classification. We distinguish between place categorization and scene categorization. A place category label encompasses all viewpoints of a particular environment, for example, all the possible views of a theater. Traditional scene category labels may confound place and viewpoint. The list on the right shows some of the theater-related scene categories in the Sun database. Some of these are place categories, and some are specific viewpoints within a place. The list also admits some viewpoints that are difficult to name. 
By defining scenes as a place category plus a viewpoint, we simplify the problem of scene categorization. This is the pipeline of our algorithm. The first step is place categorization. The second step is to simultaneously align the panoramas and train a viewpoint classifier. The place categorization step is simple. Training images are generated by sampling many different viewpoints in each panorama. The viewpoint information is ignored, and all of the images are put together into a nonlinear classifier to train the place classification model. Because we use a nonlinear classifier, we can trust the classifier to find the complicated decision boundary without worrying too much about the viewpoint. The input for the second step is a list of unaligned panoramic images from a single place category. We want to align them and train the viewpoint classifier. In this illustration, each panorama is represented by a long box. And the small boxes represent the limited field of view photos sampled from each panorama. For the first iteration of the algorithm, we use only one panorama for training. Because there's only one panorama, there is no need for alignment. We train a viewpoint classifier using one training example from each view. Now we use this viewpoint classifier to predict the viewpoint for the other training panoramas. In addition, we can calculate an overall confidence score for each panorama based on how well it aligns with the training panorama. We rank the panoramas according to their overall confidence scores. We pick the panorama with the highest confidence score and add it into the training set for the second iteration. In the second iteration, we retrain the SVM for viewpoint classification using the learned alignment and two training examples for each viewpoint. Again, we predict on the remaining training panoramas and calculate a confidence score for each. The panorama with the highest confidence score will be added to the SVM training set for the third iteration. So in the language of induction, at iteration T, we have already aligned T panoramas. We can then train a viewpoint classifier for each view using the aligned views. We predict on the remaining training images, pick the most confident prediction, and add it into the training pool with a predicted alignment. We then retrain the model with T plus one panoramas. The process continues until all panoramas have been added to the set and the final SVM is trained on the complete training set. Here are some details about the algorithm, why it works well, how to initialize it, and how it is related to curriculum learning. For details, please see our paper. Here's a description of the algorithm using a maximum likelihood interpretation. The algorithm has parallels with k-means, em, and latent structure SVM. Please refer to the supplementary materials for more details. We also study the symmetry properties of place categories. We define four common types of symmetry in real-world environments. Type 1 symmetry is no symmetry at all. Type 2 symmetry is bilateral symmetry with one axis. The red line is a symmetry axis, and the elements on either side of the line are mirror images of each other. For example, if you flip this panorama horizontally, you can obtain the same image. Type 3 symmetry is bilateral symmetry with two axes. And type 4 symmetry is isotropic symmetry, which means that all views look the same. Here are some examples of each symmetry type. Each row shows a place category with a particular type of symmetry, and each column is an image corresponding to a single viewpoint. Viewpoint angles are shown at the top using a clock face representation. The first row shows the hotel room place category, which exhibits type 1 symmetry. The second row shows the beach category, which exhibits type 2 symmetry, bilateral symmetry with one axis. For example here, the images A and B have similar structure when they are flipped horizontally.
Specifically, the coastlines are bilaterally symmetric. The third row shows the train car category, which exhibits bilateral symmetry with two axes. The four photos shown here have similar structure. C and B have the same layout, as do A and D, and the pairs are mirror images of each other. These are the place categories with type 4 symmetry. Each place category is represented by an averaged panorama. In these categories, views look similar in all directions. If we know the symmetry structure of a place, we can share training examples across different views. For type 1, there is no symmetry, so there is no sharing across views. As before, the large box in this illustration represents a panorama and the small boxes are viewpoint images. In this case, the different colors signify that these views are all different. With type 2 symmetry, any two symmetric views can be placed in the same view category to train the viewpoint classifier. This effectively doubles the size of the training data set. With type 3 symmetry, even more sharing is possible. With type 4 symmetry, there is no need to learn the alignment between panoramas or train a viewpoint classifier. All views are identical, so the model cannot do better than random guessing. For type 2 and type 3 symmetry, we need to discover the symmetry axis in each iteration of the algorithm. To do this, we exhaustively search for the symmetry axis that maximizes the joint confidence from our viewpoint classifiers. The search space is smaller for the type 3 axis because we assume that the two symmetry axes are perpendicular to each other. To determine the symmetry type, we simply use cross-validation to pick the symmetry type with the best performance. Next, we describe how the algorithm is evaluated. Because this is a new problem, we need to define our evaluation methods first. Since we've modeled viewpoint prediction as a classification problem, the simplest way to evaluate the viewpoint prediction is just to measure accuracy. Another evaluation criterion is the average deviation between the predicted viewpoint angle and the true viewpoint angle. For example, if the green arrow is the true viewpoint and the blue is our prediction, we can measure the angular difference between the two. Also, because our algorithm is aligning the panoramas without supervision, we define an oracle to assign each aligned viewpoint to one of the viewpoint directions, and evaluate based on the resultant view-to-view -view mapping. We have two outcomes to evaluate, the alignment and the viewpoint prediction. In the training phase, we evaluate how well our automatic alignment compares to manual panorama alignment. The alignment can be evaluated using accuracy or angular deviation. In this table, we compare the accuracy of our main algorithm to some alternate algorithms implemented for comparison purposes only. Overall, our algorithm performs the best. We can also measure performance based on the average angle deviation. Again, our algorithm outperforms the other methods. This is an example of an averaged panorama from manual alignment. The place category is beach, and the averaged image shows the alignment of major regions, such as the water, sand, and vegetation. This is the averaged panorama from automatic alignment of the beach category. The results are very good, and the same structures are apparent in the average image. Here is the automatically discovered axis of symmetry. The aligned panoramas and their symmetry information can be understood as a place-centric panoramic representation of the space. For comparison, here is the average panorama for the beach category when panoramas are aligned randomly. Notice that the structure of the place is no longer apparent. Here is the manual alignment for the church place category. This is the result of automatic alignment. Notice that the major structures, such as the pews, aisles, and altar, are apparent in the automatically aligned panoramas.
This is the discovered axis of symmetry. And for comparison, this is the averaged image from random alignment. Manual alignment of the hotel room category. The bed and window are apparent in the averaged panorama. Here is the averaged panorama from automatic alignment. This category has symmetry type 1, so there are no axes of symmetry. For comparison, here is the averaged panorama from random alignment. Here is the manual alignment for the street place category. Here is the averaged panorama from automatic alignment. The street layout is apparent in the automatic result. Here is the discovered axis of symmetry. And for comparison, here is the average panorama produced when the street images are aligned randomly. The street layout is no longer apparent. The coast place category is a more difficult example for our algorithm. Here is the average panorama from manual alignment. Here is the average panorama from automatic alignment. This category was not aligned as well as the others. Here are the discovered axes of symmetry which are correct. And here is the average panorama from random alignment. The lawn category was the most difficult category in the data set. Here are the results from manual alignment. Here are the results from automatic alignment. The alignment is poor because of the high diversity of images in this set. However, the discovered symmetry axis still looks correct. Finally, here is the average panorama from random alignment. Finally, we evaluate our algorithm on some test images. We use two testing sets. First, we exclude some panoramas from training and sample limited field of view images from these panoramas to use for testing. We also test the algorithm on real-world photos from the Sun database. This table shows the algorithm's performance on each test set. We evaluate place classification accuracy and viewpoint recognition accuracy separately. We also evaluate the joint accuracy. In this case, the classification is correct only if the place category prediction and the viewpoint prediction are both correct. We compare our algorithm against the model trained from manual panorama alignment. We can see that the results are actually very close. Here is a visualization of the performance when we assume different types of symmetry structure. We can see that imposing the correct symmetry structure is usually helpful, even when the imposed symmetry is incomplete. However, imposing incorrect types of symmetry always hurts performance. Here are some visualizations of the results. The first column shows the test photo which was used as an input to the algorithm. The second column shows the viewpoint predictions using a compass-like representation. The values are the scores from the SVM viewpoint classifier. The center of the compass is negative 1, the blue circle is 0, and the distance beyond the blue circle represents increasing positive scores. The last two columns illustrate the predicted viewpoint and show the extrapolated scene layout beyond the input view. The left image extrapolates the layout using the average panorama from the place category. The right image uses the nearest neighbor from the training set. In order to evaluate the algorithm's performance on real-world photos, we must obtain a viewpoint label for each image. We design an Amazon Mechanical Turk task to ask people to label the viewpoint in each Sun database image. People were shown a Sun database photo, such as the one on the left, 
and a corresponding panoramic scene image shown in an interactive Adobe Flash viewer, as on the right. People were asked to click and drag in the panorama viewer to adjust the view so that it matched the view shown in the Sun database image. In addition to providing ground truth for the algorithm evaluation, this study allows us to investigate the canonical views of scenes. It is well known that objects have canonical views. People show a preference for certain views when they are asked to photograph, draw, or imagine 3D objects. More recent studies have shown a similar bias towards certain views of scenes. The bias towards canonical views can also be seen in real-world image collections. For example, a Google image search for mug shows a bias towards the canonical view, which is a side view in which the handle is visible. Our view matching experiment showed strong biases towards particular views in the Sun image database. Here, scene categories are shown at the top, and the histograms below each category show the number of images distributed across different viewpoints, plotted in polar coordinates. The top of the histogram corresponds to the center of the panorama. For example, the histogram for the hotel room category shows that most photos of a hotel come from a narrow range of views that show some part of the bed. Beach photographs encompass a wider range of views, but there is a strong bias towards views that show the water. There are very few inland views. Most photos are taken roughly parallel to the waterline, but there is also a bias towards views looking straight out to sea. In the theater category, there is a strong bias towards views of the stage. In the train category, the most common viewpoints are views looking down the aisles towards one or the other end of the train car. The wharf category also shows a strong bias towards views which show part of the water. Next we look at how different viewpoints within a panoramic representation of a place correlate with specific sun scene categories. We train a classifier in 397 categories from the Sun database and predict on viewpoint images sampled from the panoramas. Here are the top five highest scoring Sun categories for this viewpoint in the Beach Place category. We can see that it makes a lot of sense to predict sandbar, islet, and beach. Here's another view. With no water visible in this view, the predicted categories change quite a lot. The top predictions are now volleyball court, residential neighborhood, and construction site. And in the middle view, we have both beach and residential neighborhood in the top predictions. Here's another example. Views of the rear of the theater are predicted to be movie theater. Views of the stage are labeled as stage. An interesting application of viewpoint recognition is to extrapolate additional layout around an image. Given an image like this, we can recognize that it is a view of a theater and that the camera is facing away from the stage. We superimpose the image onto the average panorama of theaters. or onto the nearest neighbor from the training set. Here you can see an input photo in the center, and the area around the photo is the extrapolation. We can clearly see how correct view alignment allows us to predict visual information that extends beyond the boundaries of the input image. In these examples, we extrapolate the extended view using texture synthesis guided by the nearest neighbor panorama. The synthesis algorithm is from Raj and Rosenholz 2010 and is based on Portia Simoncelli texture synthesis. Cognitive science experiments have shown that people extrapolate information about scenes beyond the boundary of an image. 
The examples we show here illustrate one way that scene knowledge can be used to extrapolate information beyond a given view. Being able to extrapolate information outside the available view has many applications in computer graphics. For example, we can gain information about objects which are likely to be present in the environment even when they are outside the boundaries of the photograph. For example, we might predict that boats are likely to be visible just to the left of this view. The database and source code are available online. For more information, please visit our website. Thank you.